On News Night today, we look at a report. Now, ACME, that is African Center for Media Excellence, releases every so often a report that does put the media in the spotlight, if you like. How are we covering the elections? You know, the fairness or the lack of it for that matter. Which candidate is getting a lot more coverage? Critical analysis of issues. So, tonight on News Night, we look at the latest report that ACME has released. Joining me for Newsnight is Dr. Peter Mwesige. Dr. Peter is the Executive Director of uh, ACME, that is the uh, African Center for Media Excellence. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. This is the third report, is it? Yeah, the fourth. The fourth report. Yeah. Okay, beginning with very general issues. What is sticking out of this report? I think uh, we have emphasized in this report, uh, in a general sense, the fact that uh, radio, mm. which most Ugandans depend on for their news, is not covering the election as much as television and newspapers. I think both in terms of the volume, but also in terms of some of the quality aspects of uh, media coverage, like uh, sourcing, um, investigation of claims and premises by politicians, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of the biggest issue, I think, that uh, we would like to sort of emphasize as we approach uh, next Thursday. Do you blame them? They'll tell you, look, we don't have enough resources. If you go to the quintessential newsroom of a radio station, you might find one at the most two journalists there, real reporters and that kind of thing. And then people like to think, look, video is a lot more captivating than what we get to hear. Well, I mean, yeah, given, given the ownership of radio in Uganda, we have so many radio stations, more than 200, as you know. But mm -hmm. uh, I think given the ownership, they are owned by politicians. Mm -hmm. And many of them don't employ journalists, as you have rightly said. So it is not surprising in a way that they are not giving as much attention to the story of the elections as they should. The problem is they are the biggest source of information for mm. Uganda. So in a, in a sense, you wonder whether the average Ugandan is getting enough access to information about this uh, election. Let's get to TV. From a general note again, yeah. how are we doing? television stations generally before we get to the breakdown one of the things that stands out for tv this month of january the month of january last month was mm. that uh, both tv and newspapers did very well when it came to using ordinary people as sources both of them actually after the candidates the next uh, category of sources was ordinary people which i think is a very good way of uh, providing a perspective of those who are supposed to be affected by uh, uh, you know the election as mm. it were yeah so ntv my NTV, tell me, Your how NTV. are we doing? I think you've done a good job in terms of, again, like I've just said, providing, mm. you know, ordinary people some voice, you know, the Vox Pops and all that, providing perspectives beyond the stamp. Where I think you could do better is in terms of providing more analysis of uh, the promises that these guys are making, providing the sense of more perspective in terms of, you know, the issues for different regions of the country, uh, providing more investigation. And uh, yeah, like it were, just questioning, questioning more and more of some of the things we're hearing on the presidential stamps uh, rallies. Now, look, of course, some of the promises that are made, you know, by these candidates are outlandish. Uh, to what extent does one, I imagine, you know, a journalist might ask, how do I get to dig deep, you know, to what extent and so on? How do we bring out those issues you're raising? Well, ACME, uh, several months ago, uh, published uh, a, a, a manual called Guidelines for Media Coverage of Elections. One of the things we emphasize in there, of course, is the, the usual principles like accuracy, the importance of using evidence, you know, before, uh, you know, going on air or publishing, you know, for the newspapers and so on and so forth. So, so I think there are so many resources that uh, a keen journalist can kind mm. of refer to to tell a compelling story on the p political story. And we need to do that. Look, for time and again, these candidates have come out and they've lambasted us. You have had candidate Museveni every so often call us liars and all these many things that he does say. Interestingly, it's not only him that does, you know, castigate in TV. Yeah. Sometimes you'll hear the others and so on. But what I see, and you'll tell me what you see, I tend to think that these candidates, these camps, they are intolerant. Because you see, when, for example, you run Museveni's story as number one, BCJ's camp will complain. Tomorrow when you run BCJ's story as number one, Museveni's camp will complain. When you run Baba's story as number one, then the others will complain. So I'm yeah. thinking, maybe they're all greedy. They all want this. They are, you know, intolerant, and so they keep castigating. You're not covering us fairly, and so on. What do you see? I think if I were you, I would pay far more attention to what the public tells you, if at all they tell you anything, than what the politicians say. Because for the politicians, I think it's ex expected. They are selfish. Very many of them are. They want to, if they had their way, they would spend the whole hour on NTV. They wouldn't want the others covered. So I don't, I'm not surprised 
by the attacks from either the opposition or from the ruling party. But what are the ordinary people who view you, your programs? What are they telling you, you know, civil society? And that's why we are happy when we provide this spotlight and you invite us to talk about media performance because our idea, our hope was that civil society, the ordinary people could actually sort of take this opportunity to sit back and reflect on whether they can ask you, demand of you more than they are, you know, you are, you are doing. And of course, if on the other hand you are doing a good job, that they can pat you on the back and say, keep it up, NTV, NBS, New Vision, ETC. Here's the other challenge. Mm -hmm. um, you see, we have had candidates like uh, Joseph Babirizi, who friends out there call Mabrizi, and, and <laughs> several others, you know, Professor Barry and others say, NTV, you're not covering my huge rallies, you only cover Museveni, Mbabazi, and Besiji, and all. You have been a journalist for donkey's years. How do you try and strike the balance? Uh, because you have a responsibility to viewers out there, and so on. You try and wait. Sometimes Mabirizi has a rally, sometimes he doesn't. Then there's these, you know, whom some people think are the big three, but then there's the others. How do you strike a balance? Cover the so-called big three, but then there's, uh, you know, five other candidates in the race. And give By the way, before, before I answer that question, let me say that uh, our general report shows that um, mm -hmm. all those peripheral candidates did get a bump in coverage generally both in airtime and space i think because of the, uh, the debate that uh, you know they engaged in last uh, last month so i think uh, we have seen more coverage to them than previous you know months having said that i think you've done what you could do i don't think that uh, it is fair to compare uh, with all due respect uh Marizzi, you know buanica chadi and others to the president or Mama or you know Mbaba, uh, Besiji. In, in any case, I mean opinion polls have now shown us that you know most Ugandans are sort of uh, galvanizing around those top three. So I think you owe it to Ugandans to show them more of what these top three are promising, to sort of uh, give them an opportunity to maybe ask or interrogate the claims and promises, positions of these top three candidates. You cannot, I think, give equitable time to all the eight candidates. I think it would be impractical. Finally, as we wrap this up, I know you've been involved in efforts to try and get quality into the newsroom, mm. if you like. The times you practiced and uh, you compare that to now, things are different. There's many more journalists out there. Everybody and their mother wants to hold a camera and go and cover and that <laughs> kind of thing. Mm. Do you see improvement? Because there will be complaints about, well, sometimes the quality is poor. You know, some of these journalists are not, you know, well-schooled and stuff like that. Well, sometimes... They do criticize us fairly. Sometimes you think it's unfair. But do you generally see an improvement in this profession? I see. I see improvements. I mean, one of them is this very kind of programming. I mean, in the past 20 years ago, you didn't have such, you know, news night or whatever, kind of in the middle of a news bulletin. You, know, you just mm. had basically monologues and so on and so forth. So I see some, you know, uh, improvements. I think uh, today's generation of journalists have uh, far more access to you know, uh, opportunities like social media, they can actually get access to far more information than journalists of yesteryears. And I think that uh, some of those advantages show in the way that they are trying to cover, you know, the campaign, the, the elections. Of course, there are very many who could do better. But I think that uh, we should also be, uh, I mean, we should be sort of patting a few of those who stand out on the back. I don't want to go on air and say so and so has done a good job, but you know them, you can see them. So it is, um, uh, it's not all loss. I think that uh, there is still a lot of, you know, room for improvement, but uh, we are happy with some of the improvements we have seen thus far. There's room at the top. Let's see how we get there by improving. Mm -hmm. Dr. Peter Moisige, as always, pleasure. Keep doing what you Thank do you. so we can get better. Thank you. And that's it for tonight's edition of Newsnight.